Hey guys, so today I'll be showing you how I made my latest rainbow cakes and I am recording my voice for the first time so I do apologize in advance for any mistakes I make. So first of all, here is a list of materials that you're going to need if you want to make your own rainbow cakes. So number one is polymer clay, of course. You will need white and you'll need all six colors of the rainbow. Now, keep in mind that white is going to be what you're using the most. However, you can replace it with, say, brown to get chocolate rainbow cakes. Then you're going to need a sharp white knife, as well as a roller or preferably a clay conditioning machine, which is what I'll be using as it can get quite difficult to roll out equal sheets of clay manually. I also picked up an X-Acto knife to make smaller cuts with easily and this round thing to use as a guide. If you have a large round cookie cutter, you should just use that. If not, just find anything round that you can make a circle guide with. You'll also need some toothpicks, a needle tool or anything that's sharp, pin or just a simple needle, as well as some damp Q-tips or cotton buds or whatever you, it is that you call them. They don't have to be damp right away, just make sure that you have some water close by for later. Then you're going to need some head pins if you're making charms, some gloss varnish for the top, and Fimo liquid, although this is completely optional and I'll explain why in the tutorial. And then for the very end, you'll need some super glue, the strongest you can find, some confetti or any kind of decorations you'd like to put on your cake. This will be done after baking so they can be plastic. And last but not least, round plier to twist your head pins. So first off, get equal pieces of each color clay and make sure they're big enough to fit the circle that you'll be working with after they're rolled out. Um, try to keep your white as clean as possible, but don't worry too much about it since dust can be cleaned off later. Then take your roller, or in my case, your clay conditioning machine, and start the cake by rolling out a sheet of white clay. My sheet was rolled on setting number one, which is about five millimeters thick. I didn't take enough clay on my first try, so I had to add a bit. After that, take purple and roll out a sheet just as thick as white was. Um, you can't see me rolling them since my clay conditioning machine is off screen. I always leave circle marks to know just how big I need my sheets to be. Then take white again and roll out a sheet that's about as half as thick as the purple and the original white were. Lay it down, take blue and do the exact same thing all over again and keep going with the thick colors and thin whites until you reach red which you should top off with a uh, thick white, just like the one at the very start was. Once you do that, make sure to press your keg down. I picked up a notebook and used that so it would press down evenly. Then take your cutter or any kind of round guide marking thing that you found and press it down as far as you can. If you have a cutter, it should go all the way down. If not, use a knife to cut out the rest. Um, once you take it out, it's going to be a little bit messy, but that's okay. You can just clean it up with a knife and try to make it as round as you can make it. Um, roll it, uh, just in general shape it into as brown as you can make it. Oh, and never throw out excess clay because we'll be using that to make decorations. Once you've rounded up your cake, take some more white clay and roll it out to be very thin and as long as it's possible. I rolled out this really long snake and made it into a rectangular one by cutting off those gross crispy edges. Now you'll take your whole snake and put it on the cake. Oh my god, so many rhyming words. Um, put it on the cake and just roll it around like I'm doing here. Press it down so it stays on as, as much as it can. And don't worry too much about the top because we'll be putting a decoration over there. Now take a toothpick and roll it on your clay. That's what I do if I want to smooth anything out. So if you have any kind of imperfections on your cake, just use that. See how perfect it becomes? So now, after we are finally done, we just want to make it a little bit more round. And then we'll pick up our leftover clay and start making our little decoration. You can make all sorts of decorations with leftover clay, but what I'm gonna be doing with this one is making a very long snake and twisting it together. So there's really not much to explain here. All you gotta do after you find a strip to work with is just roll and twist and roll and twist, just like I'm doing here. You could use just this one plain strip on your cake on the sides, but what I want to do is make it twice as long, then take both ends. I'll show you here in a bit. Um, just take both ends of it. Oh yeah, just keep twisting it every so often because your twist is gonna get messed up. There you go, take both ends and then twist it again together, but don't push it down. 
So now you get just lovely little texture on your little uh, snake for your cake. Gosh, I'm just going to keep rhyming those two words. Um, I pressed it down a little so it sticks together better, and then all you gotta do is just stick it on your cake. It should stay on pretty well, although if you're still worried about that, I'll show you how to make it stick on even better in a little bit later. And once again, a reminder, after you're done with this, never ever throw out any kind of leftover clay, because look, just like that, tiny lollipop, you can always use leftover clay. So after that comes the fun part, you get to cut up your cake and see the beautiful rainbow inside. Now I'm sorry for the lighting, I stood up to see better, but basically all I'm doing is just cutting it with a pretty large knife. Um, I like cutting my cases, uh, cakes in 8 pieces, but you can do more or less depending on your preference. Now that you got 8 pieces of cake, or however many you made, you can see that they're a little bit plain. Um, they don't really look like cake, just a bunch of random rainbow strips. So what I do is you got 6 colors and each one you should take a needle and sort of scratch and tease the clay. Don't poke it, but just whatever you do, don't poke it, that's not a realistic texture. All you gotta do is just tease it, scratch it, um, you can imagine that you're writing something on it completely random. And what I like to do is do every single color separately, because if you do them together, the cake is just going to look a little bit messy, because all the colors are going to fly everywhere. So do that to every single one of your cakes, it's going to take a while. I only did one cake for the sake of the tutorial, but once you're done, um, if your cake has any dust, take a damp q-tip and rub the dust off with it. Once you're done with that, take a head pin and just pierce it through the bottom of the cake and out the side. I always recommend using head pins instead of eye pins because eye pins tend, tend to fall out um, really easily, so they're not very reliable. Now this is optional, but if you want a sort of jello finish on your cake, spread some female liquid on it. This will also help the side decoration stay on better. Then throw your cake in the oven and bake it in according to instructions on your polymer clay. Um, sorry for the lighting again, it got dark outside. So once your cakes are done baking and cooled off, take your pliers and twist the head pins into a loop. You can just cut the head pins off a little and make one loop, but I feel like twisting the whole thing just makes it stay on stronger. Once you're done with that, pick up your decorations, whatever they were, in my case they were stark and fetty, and arrange them, see what you want to do with them. I just decided to go with one star in the middle and one tiny star below it. So all you gotta do with these is just super glue them on. And don't worry about the stars falling off, um, the gloss varnish actually holds them very well. And since the super glue dries super fast, I can immediately go ahead and add a layer of the very same gloss varnish. Actually, I ended up adding a couple of more layers for extra shine and strength later. And there you have it! Um, after all that work that you put in, you have your very own rainbow cake charm ready to be made into a necklace, keychain, or whatever it is that you want it to be. So thank you all very much for watching, I really hope this tutorial helps someone out there, and if you decide to make your own, I'd absolutely love to see it, so make sure you send me a link! And before you go, as a special treat, I'm holding a giveaway! I've done so many giveaways on all of my social media websites, like Tumblr and Instagram and so on, so there's no need to leave my YouTube watchers empty-handed. I'll be giving away one of the cakes I made in this very same video, and all you gotta do to enter is subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below telling me what your favorite cake flavor is. Um, I'll choose one random winner next Saturday on the 18th of July. And yes, I will ship this internationally with no charge. So good luck everyone, and have a lovely weekend!